Xin chào, tôi tên là David và tôi đang học tiếng Việt. Vietnamese is a very interesting language and it differs from English in a lot of ways. One of the most stark differences that I've noticed so far and I've really had to get my head around is that it has a low morpheme to word ratio. A morpheme is the smallest meaningful part of a language. So in English we have the word running, which is a combination of two morphemes, run and ing. We put the two morphemes together and we get one word, running. In Vietnamese, instead of combining the two morphemes into a single word, we take two words, which are both a morpheme, and chain them together to make a compound word, deng chai. Vietnamese being an isolating language means that most complicated words and ideas are communicated through a combination of these chained compound words. In my learning journey, I've come across many words that have common root words. So for instance, the word hop means to learn. The word hoc phi means tuition, and the word hoc sin means pupil. So I got to wondering what other words might be based on the root word hoc, and what words might use the word hoc as a modifier to change their meaning. Well, to answer this question, I'm going to be making what I've dubbed the Vietnamese language graph. That's going to be a node-based graph system that visualizes the connection between all of these words and hopefully helps me expand my vocabulary as I learn each of these root words. As I approach a new project, I like to think about what the actual goal of the project is. And my goal here is to expand my vocabulary. So I'm not going to be optimizing it within an inch of its life, and I'm not going to be building my own front end. I want to get something up and running as quickly as possible so that I can build my language skills. To do that, I see this project breaking down into four main steps. One, sourcing the word data. Two, parsing it into a usable format. Three, connecting related words. And then four, presenting all of that in a nodal graph view. Now, finding the data didn't actually take that long. I figured I'd use a Vietnamese to English dictionary from some open source project on GitHub. So I searched Google with the GitHub site dork and quickly came across a English to dictionary Java project written by a student at Ho Chi Minh University. Come on, Quang Hen. The data is in XML format, but before I get my hands on it, I wanted to decide how I'm going to be displaying it so that I know how I should be formatting the data so the words connect easily. Now, like I said, the point of this project is to learn Vietnamese. It's not to build my own nodal graph GUI. So I want to use a pre-built front end. Recently, I've been watching some note-taking videos about Obsidian. It's got an awesome nodal graph view and all the data that goes into it is stored in markdown text files. So it'll make it really easy to chain words together in those different markdown files. It'll also allow me to build links between the different words so that I can uncover different interesting ways that they all connect. Now, I might want to do something more complicated in the future, so while my primary goal is going to be getting all of these words into separate markdown files for Obsidian, I'd also like to convert it into a SQLite database that I can keep on my GitHub and use for a future project. Okay, now that we have the what figured out, let's talk about the how. So here's the plan. Let's say that we have three morphemes, A, B, and C. And then we've got a word, A, B, C. We're gonna search backwards through ABC and look for morphemes from small morphemes to bigger morphemes. So the first one that we find is C, which will connect there. The next one that we find is BC, which will connect to BC morpheme. And then we find ABC, which we don't have to connect to anything because that is the word. Next, we see AB, which will connect here. And then we see just A which we would connect to the root word, but we're not going to because we have a nice connection through A to AB to ABC. So now we've got that all established. Let's write the code. So I've actually already written the code. All I did was really pull the XML into a data frame and then loop through each row and loop through each morpheme in that row and do the connections as I laid out. Unfortunately, this has created a couple of edge cases and problems that definitely need to be optimized. But first, let's have a look at the Obsidian graph and how it turned out. They're loading in super slowly. I'm not even sure if it's going to be able to record this. If we zoom in, we can see there are some larger words here that have lots of little words connected to them. 
When I initially pulled all the Markdown files into this vault, it did not have any connections and took 20 minutes to load all of them and create the graph view. I'm not quite satisfied yet because in our graph view, there are a lot of broken links and words that don't exist in the dictionary. Now I want to improve this graph view so that there are no dead links and so that it's a wealth of knowledge for me to pull from. My next step here is to think through the end result that I want and the problems that I'm having and see if I can come up with a solution. I think a lot of great problem solving happens when your mind is relaxed. So let's take a moment. That break really helped because I know what we're gonna do now. Instead of looping through each morpheme individually, we're going to break each long compound word down into all of the possible words that it could be and check if those words exist in the dictionary. So for instance, if we have the word A, B, C, D, we can have a combination of four individual words, the word A, the word B, the word C, the word D. We could have the word AB or the word BC or the word CD, or we could have the word ABC, or the word BCD. Those are all of the possible words that could exist in the dictionary that make up the word ABCD. So what I'm going to do is take our dictionary and loop through sections broken down by how many morphemes or words are used to create each compound word. And then I'm going to take each individual word, all of the possibilities from ABCD, and I'm going to check if those exist in the dictionary. If they do, then the file for ABCD gets a link to that word. If they don't, then it's just a word that is used to attach to make up a new word. This should remove all those dead links that I was seeing, and it should improve the knowledge base overall. So let's get to it. That's right, I already wrote the code again. I went ahead and I moved everything into separate functions so that the main function reads really nicely, and I've created our dict match search method, which is the new search method that's going to work just like I wrote down on the table. It's going to replace the reverse search method and while it is a little bit slower, it's way more accurate and should give a really great result. Now let's jump in and see how the Obsidian node graph looks. Here is the finalized node graph. Look at all those connections, it's so dense. Now as I zoom in, this mess of gray becomes clearer and you can see it's actually all of the individual connections. It's an insane amount of connections for Obsidian because so many words are chained together in different ways. Now, if we hover over a word like N or to eat, we see all of the connections are highlighted out. Not super useful because they're all kind of spread out, but what we can do is filter the graph view just for this word. All right, so now that we're all zoomed in, we can see the graph for the word to eat. There's a bunch of different connections to different words that I don't know, and now I can learn. One that I do know is to make a meal or to have a meal, and we can see that it's connected to another word. Now, I know the word tang, which is month, but I can't imagine what the connection of those three words would be. 
and now I can open it up and find out. And we can see it means to board. We can also see the subwords underneath that and we can open up any of these and see what they mean and kind of get a sense of how the word comes together. This is exactly what I was looking to get out of it. I've got a graph here of a word that I do know that I can branch out and learn new words and expand my vocabulary. Well, I think that just about wraps up my Vietnamese language graph project. I've now got a tool that I can actually use in my language learning journey and a code base that's clean enough that I can scope up the whole project in future if I want. If you're interested, all of the code and a project write-up is available in my GitHub in the link below. And that's about all for now. I'll see you next time. Come on, Ban, DSM.